Hey friends, it's Brian here and it's time for Jeep video number 64. This is my salvage uh, Jeep build. So, um, anyway, look at my playlist Jeep build if you want to see all the videos in this. Um, if you enjoy the video, remember to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell so that you find out when I release new videos. Um, today's project is to work on the engine installation and uh, one of the first things I need to do is I've got some wiring back here that needs the um, sheathing replaced. So I have some other videos where I replaced all the sheathing on most of the wiring. Uh, some of it's just flat missing and a lot of it's what's left is in really shitty condition. So I'm going to get under here and I want to get after that. And then I'm going to work on um, installing the engine. Woo! It's been a long time to put this engine back in here. And maybe I'll remember where all these parts go. Now, I, I have a pretty good idea where they go. Um, so anyway, that's what we're up to today. The engine is really low in the frame, which gives me access above the transmission. And... Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the toys I'm using. So, um, let's see here. Yeah, it looks, that looks pretty good right there. So I've got these Coast lights that I bought and they are absolutely fantastic. Um, I've been really impressed with battery life on everything so far. But this, these are going to let me put light up above here that otherwise would be really hard to, to put lights in. And these um, last quite some time. And uh, I bought these because they're really versatile in terms of where um, you can put them and what they'll attach to. They have a clamp. They'll clamp around pipe. They have a stand. They have magnets on the bottom. I mean, they're just... They're very, very versatile. Um, and i give you an example here. I'm going to clip it to the battery. And then I can swivel it and kind of point it where I want. And the other one's just kind of jammed in there. And then I also have some DeWalt um, lights. Now, these things are bright as fuck. And they last a long-ass time if you put big batteries in them. If you don't put big batteries in them, they don't last so long. But that's where we're at. Uh, next thing's next. I'm going to sweep under there just to try and... So I don't have to crawl in dirt any more than I absolutely have to. Um, and I'm going to put away anything that I recognize as not being where it's supposed to be. Um, I got a lot further last night than I thought I was going to. I've still got a long way to go. So it just is what it is, but we're going to get after it. Thanks for joining me, and I hope this is inspirational. Um, you know, I, I, just before we get going, I'll talk a little bit about this. I, I had a 93 Jeep when I was in much younger. I wanted another Jeep, but I knew that I wanted to customize the Jeep, and I just it didn't make any sense to me to pay a stupid amount of money for a Jeep because quality isn't any better than it used to be, knowing that I was going to tear it up by using it for what it's supposed to be used for and also by customizing it. So I thought, well, let's just buy a Jeep that's been totaled, but that's rebuildable. And so a major insurance company evaluated this, said, you know, broken motor mount required a new engine, uh, bent frame, little body damage, two deployed airbags. Yeah, they totaled it pretty fast. But all that stuff, I, I've probably done I don't know, a couple and a half thousand dollars worth of work to it. And then I've got another fourteen or fifteen hundred dollars of opportunities. Um, you know, I've done things like replace the water pump, replace the the air com air conditioning compressor. And that, that didn't have to be done, but I'm doing it because I'm in here. Uh, valve cover, oil pan gaskets, rear main seal, uh, transmission input seal. And I've got videos of all this in case you want to see how I did it. So anyway, let's get under the Jeep and get busy. I'm sorry if this is not um, the best in terms of uh, 
it may be a little disoriented. I'm on the passenger side of the transmission and what I'm dealing with is um, it's gonna be a pain in the ass. So all this this wire loom back here is just fried. I mean that's that's really all there is to it. Now some of it I can get to and some of it is gonna have to wait until I take the cross member out from underneath here to do uh, the transmission mount. Yeah, I don't see any other way to deal with it. So I'm gonna pull out and it's just crumbling as I grab it. This is shot. This is not where you want wiring problems either. And I regret not dealing with this. This uh, vent tube needs to come out of the way, so we'll just shove it back there with some other crispy ass wire loom that's literally disintegrating in my hands as I touch it. I mean, this stuff is so bad that, like, I don't, I don't understand it. Some of it's like, you know, this ain't gonna protect your wires. This is gonna start a fire. I mean, you just can't have your wires like this. Now, what am I... Oh, I see what's going on. God damn it. I have a hunch that should have been up above there. You know what? I'm gonna unclip all this. Because the only way this is gonna get done right is if this comes out of here. Oh wow, this is tra just trash. One. suck ass.
it would be easier if I could actually see what I was doing. Does this thing go? Damn it. It apparently just kind of continues back. That's irritating. So my shitty options, I don't like that being pinned in here. I think this wire should have been above this tube. It certainly would make it easier remove this crappy ass tape.
All right. Good goddamn riddance. Another piece up there, another piece down here. I gotta get a little screwdriver and change gloves again. And I might as well take all this trash with me. So I'm going to uh, continue to strip down the uh, wiring harness. This is a pain in the ass, but it is worth it. Um, the only real debate in my mind at this point is, do I... Um, Do I reroute the wires? There we go. I mean, this is just fried. I'm not sure you Now, it's worth pointing out that I'm over flexing the transmission mount, but I've got a new one sitting on the shelf behind me. So that was planned as something that needed to be replaced as part of this project anyway. There we go. crackling as I as I grab it. I think I'm more impressed that any of these hoses are in okay condition. But I'm gonna reroute these out of my way. So, <laughs> that sucks. That's just really not the right place for that. So I'm gonna have to take this bolt loose in order to get this cable out from under there. And um, it's wrapped to here, but uh, again, that's just not right. So let me get the right tool for that. And I'll be back momentarily. Okay. So let's see if we can get this in here. I don't have high hopes for it. <laughs> I 
we've got. All right, let's see if uh, that small extension is going to get me where I want to go. Yes, you are seeing me twist the handle and turn the ratchet. That is the magical capability of this particular ratchet. really hard on my hands. I'll pay for this later. I uh, took two Tylenol and a Celebrex to start the day off because I knew I was going to be doing stuff that's just really hard on my hands. bolts. It's not stuck, it's just hard. There it goes. something out of the way that I saw a spider in yesterday. I don't want it anywhere near my foot. bolts out and that allows me to get that completely out from underneath and that will make this significantly easier to work with I don't see any damage there but that's a real susceptible spot so that was the whole purpose of that 
Uh, I need Loctite and I'll be back in a minute. Can't see a damn thing, so I have no idea. Well, I have no good idea where. <laughs> well, it's not there. like it could be there. Alright, it's just over. All right, so I'm gonna get the long ratchet and I'm gonna um, set it from the back. Back in a minute. Okay, hopefully you guys can see that. If not, I'm sorry. Uh, I can't see the screen and at this point I'm crawling back behind the transmission because this is the only way to get a socket up here. Of course, it won't stay. <clears throat> I'm uh, twisting it by hand now, and I'm going to switch over to the torquey wrench. These are 27 foot pounds and the bottom ones are 43 and they just about set this to 43, which I'm pretty sure it can handle, but <clears throat> I 
There we go. Let me put tools clean. I'll be right back. All right, so I'm gonna put gloves on. I don't think this is these are gonna last that long, but I'm gonna put them on anyway. You might be thinking, what are you talking about? Well, I'm trying to keep my fingers from getting greasy early in the day, so I'm wearing gloves. But I'm gonna be working with wire loom and. Wire loom is notoriously um, slippery. So I think it's larger wire loom. And I think we need to come down to about there. This has to be cut with scissors. And moment of truth. piece that's okay but good all right so we need to deal with up there first and I'm pretty sure I cannot use tape with gloves in here. This is Tisa tape. I'll put a link in the comments or in the description. Uh, it's really good automotive tape. All right. Now I need just a little bit to anchor here. Um, I want to anchor the loom before I start working on the next segment. good right there. So that'll get that there. That's there. We're gonna have fun finding it, figuring out where all these uh, cables go. think quarter inch is probably fine I have different sizes of uh, this wire wrap material uh, this is the hardest to work with because it's really small it's just hard on my hands it's 
not anything special about the material. Oh, I need to undo some of this first. Okay, so once it's on here, I need to make sure it's actually wrapped, and then um, anchor it. And this just keeps it from uh, coming apart at the end. Uh, needs to be anchored at the other end as well. Uh, I'm resting my hands for a minute. So I have quarter, three eighths, half, and three quarter um, loom. The bulk of what we're using today is is probably the three quarter. I really don't have that much more of this to do. Um, I spent a couple days, you know, a couple hours at a time working on other sections of the engine harness or the wiring harness. Dip tubes really not my friend. All right, so I'm going to test out a different technique for the tape where I take a piece and just go up in here with it. There are some clearance challenges here, as you all can see. Now, this anchor here that my hand is on is not in bad condition. Um, I don't know if I want to replace that or not. I guess I probably should. Let me see if I can get it out without a whole lot of hassle. cutters for that. Uh, let me go find those. Alright, so we're just going to clip this out. The critical thing here is making sure you don't catch any wires. I've got some replacements for this, so let me go figure out what this is. I'll be right back. So it appears to be a 4.6 millimeter anchor, and it came from that hole, so. The way these work is uh, these are Panduit. Yep, that's exactly what that was. And now I can come back with a zip tie. Although, there we go. Yeah. So that's what these are gonna get replaced with. Um, so let's see how much of this we can get access to now. Eh, a fair amount. Uh, this vent tube's in my way, so we'll push it up out of the way. And <sighs> I'm 
looking at this, trying to figure out. I mean, ideally I would get this whole harness loose, but that's not going to happen because it, it goes back beyond the end of the transmission and goes to the back of the vehicle. Which is unfortunate, but, you know, I understand from a manufacturing standpoint it's easier to place one wiring harness than it is to place multiples, but god damn it. How much harder would it have been to run, like, the rear wiring through some other means? I mean, why the top of the transmission where it's, you know, fucking hot? So, whatever. So, I'm going to just kind of be loosey-goosey with this and cut this larger than I think it needs to be with the understanding that I'll get I'll deal with it at the other end. Cuz this one's just just going to be difficult to get in here. Um Although it's kind of going in pretty easy right now. Maybe they are all going to be difficult. Ha ha ha. If they were all this difficult, I'd be happy. Actually, that's that one went really well. So, I've got really good access here at this point. So, I'm going to find my tape. I've actually got enough access. Let me go get the bigger one. Okay, so normally I would just use a roll until it was gone, but in this particular case where I know that I'm going to be working in some tight locations, and I've got a location that's not that tight, I'm going to start a new roll so I can make it a smaller roll that fits and two tight locations. we need here. So that brings us right to this joint. So at this point, I've got a wrap joint up there on top of the transmission. 
Now, if I took the whole shifter assembly out, I could probably reach it. Let me look at that. I don't think I want to do that, but let me look at that. All right, this doesn't look that complicated. Like, it's a bolt here, and it doesn't look like anything else holds it on, and god damn, that thing needs to be cleaned. So, I can only regret this later. I just don't think this, this just doesn't look that complicated. And it's gonna give me fantastic access from above. Jeep's nasty, filthy. It needs a really, really good fucking cleaning. You know, whatever kid owned it before me uh, clearly had no concept of anything other than throwing french fries on the ground. Let me go see what the other side looks like. Whatever it is, it's not on this side. Okay, that's that makes this easier. There's the bolt. That's what's holding it in. <laughs> well, I have a hunch that that's supposed to be connected. fucking things in the way. So I'm gonna get my wrench, my power wrench. I need to do work in here anyway, cause that's next on my list uh, after the engine's in. This is filthy nasty. Um, 
All right, let me go grab something over here. Okay, so. side for a minute. I sometimes wonder if I should have just taken the whole goddamn thing apart and laid it out. So I said, wonder if I should have just taken the whole thing apart and laid it out in the driveway. one really big pain in the ass screw out and one to go. those are connected so let me go to the
over this, I'm going to find an adapter. I'll be right back. Okay. That's much easier. There we go. Good enough. Like I said, a whole lot better access from up here. So let me uh, reset my camera and I'll be back in a minute. All right, so I think that will actually, that little adventure will pay for itself in time saved. And I'll certainly be able to do a better job. do shit like this. more comfortable laying on my chest than on my back with dust falling in my face. So if you have an older Jeep, this is probably something you need to do when the opportunity presents itself. Because otherwise this is going to create a lot of wiring problems.
afraid I was not going to be able to find that. I had several of these where I couldn't find the end. I hate small gas engines. All the noise they make in the background. And the GoPro camera is tuned to pick up extraneous noise. So we're going to work on getting more of this out. It looks like we've got a loom here and here. So we're going to clear both of these. You know what? Let's do this the easy way. So I got one out, so now I'm going to work on getting the hold down loose. The hold down is just a smidge too small. There it goes. And it's the same, it's the same hold down. Uh, they're 4.6 millimeter. <clears throat> and it's just going into a threaded hole so it's not a big deal easy to replace there we go I got one loose so these just pop right out of here and then you can come in and cut these off make sure I'm clear of the wire So now I want to inspect this for damage. I'm going to feel for it. Might have a little bit there. So let me let me get some more lights in here and we'll see. I have a 
pretty well lit shot, but you still, you know, you just can't have enough light. So we do have a little bit of a nick here. Uh, let me go underneath there. I'm gonna try and clear that. Um, I'm gonna try and clear that other piece of wire. on the other side. and a half to get off but this uh the uh trim puller seems to have made it easier So I need another one of these down in there. This is a bigger one. Let me get my clipper so I can match it.
So the other ones were 4.6 and these are 6.3 and I think this is the right size. Clears that side of the bar. Boom. I'm going to go get the trash can and relocate it over here by me. Sometimes I just can't find the start on these and I have to rip them apart.
All right. This is going to be a tough one to get un unraveled. All right, I got to deal with that light in my eye from down. Uh, I'm getting spotlighted from below. This didn't turn out to be quite as awful as I thought it was going to be, but it's full of dirt. All right. So. Got a little bit of damage here, so I'm going to untwist these and get some tape in here. In this case, I'm going to use um, a different tape. I'm going to use some 3M uh, tartan tape because this is actually ideal as insulation replacement. And my repair is going to be a little bit unorthodox. These wires are never going to come apart. So, I'm just going to bond them together. All right, so now that I've done that, got to get my piece of tape. I know it seems like this has been a really, really slow and tedious project, and in some ways it is, but that's electrical and wiring in general. Okay, so now I've got that and that and that. We need a very small piece there. So we'll start with that. So now we're going to take the piss out of this.
All right, so let's go ahead and do, um, I think this one will actually be pretty easy. So we're gonna go ahead and do this one next. And it needs, I believe it needs 3 8 wirings or shield, so that's what I'm gonna use. I intentionally cut it long because this material is pretty cheap at a dollar a foot and I'd rather waste some material than have to patch it. And this allows me to be a little aggressive with my installation. the way that fits. All right, so again, we're gonna come back in and we're gonna anchor this. Okay, so now I'm gonna stop and get a drink of soda and then I'm gonna start on these. All right, so we got a little unraveling to do over here. Thought we were done with this, but apparently not. Sometimes, uh, there it is. Sometimes you can't find that, and you just, it's easier to cut off a little piece like this. But if you can unravel it, it's safer and easier. So, this is gonna be a quarter inch piece, and we're gonna come all the way down to here. And again, we're gonna slightly overcut it. This is the part that I, I don't like. I just really struggle to get these this stuff to open up. I think it's a good material.
I frequently like to spin this to make sure that it's that I have untangled it and it's wrapped properly. All right, so that part's a little sketchy there, but otherwise the rest of it looks pretty good. <clears throat> Beginning to get a little bit toasty in here, so what I'm going to do after I wrap this is I'm going to stop and point the, the airflow from the mini split to where I'm sitting. Good old Texas sun, it's going to be 100 out. This garage is not super well insulated, so it is what it is. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Alright, so that's going to make it better. It's not going to make it perfect. Um, I need to spray foam the bottom of the um, roof and I just, it should have gotten done when I had my spray foam rig and it didn't because it wasn't a priority and yeah, it just hasn't been a priority. But I think I'm going to use some of that Kraken stuff. Um, it looks like it's just what I would like to use for this. Oh, and let me anchor this. So, one of the things I like to do with this is I like to run a loop or two around it. And then I like to take it across the wire it's teeing into and come back. And I call this an anchor. What that does is it ensures that my sleeve can't slip down off the, the wiring. All right, there we go. That looks nice. So we've got a little jumper here that needs to be done. That's gonna be in 3 8 material. So let's find a little piece of this. And of course, this material is much easier to work with. One thing I forgot to do is this spot where I healed the the insulation. I want to just put a loop around this, maybe two. Um, it, it, this just keeps the loom together, and then I'm going to have to lay back across the seat in order to do what needs to be done here. So sometimes it'll catch itself and so you just have to slow down. continue. We've got another little piece here that needs to be installed. 
So this looks like it's about there. I'm trying to be a little bit better with my material. So I'm gonna bring this over here. Yeah, opening the tunnel was absolutely the right thing to do. This would have been very, very difficult to do from below and I don't know that it would have been done correctly. And the consequences of bad insulation on your transmission control wiring are probably not pretty. This transmission is not the best choice. I, you know, I don't know. I, I just, I, I'm not a fan of electronic transmissions. I don't think there's anything that they're doing that couldn't be done with um, mechanical. My biggest gripe with automatic transmission is I, I can't rebuild it myself, so I'm, I'm totally dependent on somebody else, and I, I don't like that. I don't like dependency. piece of quarter inch material here. And I'm gonna stop for a second. Okay. Again, this material is just difficult to work with in this size. Sometimes you can twist it and spin it and get it to go on like that with these small pieces. pretty nice to me at least so now we're gonna swing back and around and just put a partial anchor in Three-eighths material, and it looks like there. This one's a little tricky, so I am going to cut it long, knowing that I will probably throw some away. Looks like I have plenty of material at this stage. It's good. I actually ran out once and had to order more of it. Okay, 
that looks nice. So I'm going to change up my game here a little bit and I'm going to work my way down. See if I can get this one right. Nope, it's stuck to itself. So I'm going to come out here so I can get onto the loom and close it off. This is a pretty exposed location, so I want pretty heavy um, layer of tape on it. That looks good. looks pretty darn solid to me. I'm just going to close up my tape and hopefully it'll set to itself. The Texas heat certainly isn't going to hurt it. Okay. So let me stop for a little soda break and rest my fingers again. And um, what I got to do now is make a decision going this way. So I think I'm going to take this all the way back to the firewall. Damn it. Um, And of course, like many things on the Jeep when it comes to connectors, you have to practically be fucking Houdini in order to, there it goes. So it, this, this clip has to be pushed out in order to release. Okay, so there's one more clip back there. Um, really hadn't planned to spend the day on wiring, but it, this really needs to be done. So it, it just is what it is. Uh, I realize it's not very exciting and it certainly isn't putting the engine in, but um, you know, if I'm on the side of the road with a dead dead engine or a PCM problem, I ain't going anywhere. That's not going to help me. So, I'm going to get this dealt with. Even if I really find it frustrating to get to this. Sustainability is not a dirty word.
you get to a certain point where you've got enough of this stuff loose that you just need to break it off so you can continue to unravel without having to fight with it. All right, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna pull this out where I can get to it. A quarter inch and three, three eighths. Dust, dust, dust. So let's find our three eighths material. little bit too much um, material but I think it'll be okay so I'm gonna leave alone. I'll hop up in here so I can curse the tape. Yeah, seriously, this tape is like $6 a roll. It's not that much more expensive than 3M tape, and it's a lot higher quality tape. All right, let me push all this down. I think that's too long. But I, I want to make sure I get it correctly sized, and this is a difficult location. Okay, so we're gonna have to take off at least this much, maybe a little more. <clears throat> Again, it's gonna be a little tight. That's all right, I, I prefer it this way. this is one of these situations where my small roll of tape comes in handy and that's part of the reason I was using the big roll where I could. I'm not quite seated there. There we go. In tight spaces you need a really small roll. 
to get in here. another one back here. I think I have to get to this one from below. So let me see what that looks like. So this is where we picked up and uh, we do need to work on from here. So we need to free this one and we're going to cut it. Uh, let me get the camera position and we'll get going. Before I get going, this just clips in here and I'm going to replace this. It goes all the way back to the fuel tank, which you can't see yet but we are gonna work all that. Okay, so beautiful thing about this is there's actually some room back here. So we're gonna do it to it. Um, now, ideally, shit, that doesn't need to come all the way out. Let's see, ideally I would have used a screwdriver on that. And then I'm just not even going to jack with this. That's what I was hoping. Yeah, it still needs. see if I can find a hold down for that. All right, that was a 6.3, finally. take off All right, so um, 
and see where the new material is. Uh, I thought I brought it down with me. I guess I didn't. So let me go get the replacement material. All right. Let's eat some more dirt. Because, you know, when you work underneath it, dirt falls off right into your mouth. Yeah, it's a NP231 transfer case, new process 231. <clears throat> which is pretty much what I expect to find on everything except a Rubicon, which has a MP241. So that's going to be quarter and this is going to be quarter. Where the hell is the start? There it is. Now we just got to do this. Oh, we got to do a punch with that. Um, let me go see if I can find something. All right, much better. I found a towel that lets me uh, rest my head on it. So I don't have to hold my head up at the same time I'm working under here. Just uh, less stress on the neck muscles. Okay, that looks like the nasty, last of this nasty fucking work above the transmission.
Right. Whew. So. Ow. Fucker. <sighs> I uh, hit my head on the drive shaft. Not good. So, at this point, we've got uh, almost everything. Back together. Um, so now the question is quarter or three eighths. Uh, I've got a little bit more stuff to cut. Uh, let me back the camera. All right, this is actually almost comfortable back here. Not sure where this was attached, but we're gonna cut it out anyway. end it right there. make a test pit and see how the 3 8 material looks on here. I just happen to have a scrap of it laying here, so that's perfect. It's a little loose, but you know what? So was the other material, so I think this will be fine. cut it long.
I don't think this will take that long for me to install because this stuff usually goes pretty smoothly. But this is a longer piece of it and that is one of the things that seems to make it more difficult. So, one thing I want to do is I want to stop and I want to anchor it. <clears throat> I want to do it with a small roll. because it can get away. So we're going to make sure that doesn't happen again. slow down a little bit because it's making my hands tingle.
Right. Almost there. That's exactly what I want, right there. Especially old crusty ass split loom. Alright. Scissor, scissor, set me free. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna tuck that in up there. And then this one can go here. there. There was a hole right here, so let me get a, a catch for that, and I'll be right back. Okay, that's a 5.6. It was right there. 
fuck does this seem to be a pain in the ass? for the body. <sighs> okay, it's not a 5.6. It's a bigger hole in that. Oh yeah, it's the next size up. Alright, I'll be right back. So the fuel lines are in my way. There it goes. All right. <laughs> now for my next magic trick. <laughs> you gotta be fucking kidding me. Alright, so you gotta twist this. And then you can get it in here. Oh, that's gotta be the harder one. Where the fucking clippers go. Uh, that might be the sharp thing I feel under me. Yep. There they are. Mm. All right. Now, the wire loom was a little bit thicker, so I'm going to secure these. So they don't bounce out and get destroyed because I suspect this is my fuel gauge. Uh, I think that one's good, but I'm going to secure it anyway. Mm 
So, the show down here is over. Now I've got to go back upstairs. So I attached this. And, I mean, this is this is nice and clean. Um, I'm excited. Yeah. So, back upstairs we go. Alright, so. Now we get to untangle how that was run. So all that goes over there. This one comes here. Clearly was designed to be serviced from here. That needs to turn 90 degrees. So now I've got to go set all this. So let me go figure out where all that was running and we'll go on the other side. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that this was back behind here. All right, and it slides down there. All right, I heard a snap, a snap. And then it was anchored there. So let's go ahead and recreate that anchor. <clears throat> the advantage of these Panduit anchors is that the zip ties can easily be replaced in the future if for some reason that's necessary. Good. I'm guessing that that's how these go. Okay, that looks good. And I think this one goes there or there. All right, and I think. There's another one of these up here somewhere. Let me snip this. And it's back up top. Okay, so there is a strap there and there. So you guys probably can't see them. Uh, that'll probably help. So here and here, so that strap goes there, and then this one goes there. So we'll do the far one first, and I'm sorry if all you guys got those armpit there. Uh, let me see if I can rearrange this. There's a good chance this is going to be a shitty uh, shot here because it's really hard for me to reach. And I gotta reach this. 
so I'll... Alright, so first things first, thread that through there. And then... There's that. And then there's that. Now there's another one up here, which suggests that that's where that one goes. Shitty, shitty camera angle here. But I am actually working on this. So the priority is getting done. If I can get a good shot of it, I will. anticlimactic in terms of like all the work that we're into getting to where we are but all right so we're gonna go back under here there's a connector there that needs to be connected so that's what I'm gonna work on next all right so we got one here that needs to pop down goes yeah uh, thro throttle position or crankshaft position sensor all right so now we need to start untangling this up here and all right that's a ground pretty sure this goes to this So that's a couple things. Now, I swore there was something up here. Hole. Where is it? So I'm gonna zip tie it here because I don't I don't want this harness stressed. And I think it will be if it just sits here. Uh, let me look from the upper side. So I'm working on this area here. Alright, so all that really remains to be done here is to secure this wire. So I'm gonna zip tie it to the fill tube because I think that's okay. Uh, I spent some time doing some research and concluded that yeah that's fine. Um, that can stay loose. This will get dealt with a little bit later. All right where's the clip nippers? lost that well can't believe that piece of shit that went down in the heat shield all right so uh the next thing that needs to happen is i need to deal with the torque converter nuts um let me see kind of where i'm at on that
yeah, that's going to probably be a pain in the ass. Might require loosening the transmission again. Damn it. I hope not. So we'll see. Um, that's after lunch. I'm going to stop for lunch at this point. Um, but yeah, this is the next thing that needs to happen. Um, and then I'm going to need to deal with um, the engine mounts 